Welcome to Declassifying the Paranormal. Here we reveal the secrets that sinister organizations attempt to conceal from the world, objects and entities that could shake the very foundations of what we think is, and is not, possible. Today we have secured documents belonging to the SCP Foundation, and will reveal to you the nature of SCP-6167. Item Number, SCP-6167 Object Class, Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-6167 is only to be accessible via the mine shaft that reaches 60 meters beneath the lowest floor of Site 45-C. If additional subterranean floors are constructed for Site 45-C that would make this mine shaft no longer the lowest point of Site 45-C, the mine housing SCP-6167's entryway must first be dug deeper, so that it remains the deepest part of Site 45-C. SCP-6167 and its uncontained, former inhabitants, SCP-6167 number, 665 individuals, yet to be classified, represent an imminent attempt at an HK class deific subjugation scenario. Further entry into SCP-6167 is forbidden without permission from a level 5 personnel. Dr. Harold Crote, current alias, Dr. Harriet Crote, has defected and should be apprehended immediately for termination. Missing Foundation Personnel from SCP-6167-2, formerly SCP-1913-1-D, are to be apprehended as well for interrogation. SCP-6167 itself is simple to contain. However, it represents a much greater threat in the form of SCP-6167- number. SCP-6167 number are their own unique entities with varied anomalous properties, and, when under containment, will each require their own file. Many instances of SCP-6167 number have previously been classified under other file designations, which are now defunct. Special containment procedures for each instance will be contained under their individual sub-file. Description SCP-6167 is an extra-dimensional space with an entrance that relocates itself to the deepest part of Site 45-C. SCP-6167's entryway is a hatch that acts as a trans-dimensional portal. Inside is a wooden ladder, which goes approximately 40 meters down, and leads to SCP-6167's first, cave-like, floor. SCP-6167's interior is approximately 800 meters, 0.5 miles, in diameter. SCP-6167 circumference, skies, and bedrock are all composed of a black, indestructible, sulfuric material. All attempts to damage or sample from this material have failed. Each floor, barring the first, was made to resemble a variety of natural biomes, with plant life, lakes, and small oceans. There are a total of nine floors, each one having served a different function, such as a dining area, a farming district, and a marketplace. For more information, see document D6167-4. Excluding the discovery of former Foundation researcher, Dr. Harold Crote, SCP-6167 is devoid of living fauna. However, it is known that SCP-6167 was previously inhabited by the exiled citizens of SCP-2746-1. The residents, classified as SCP-6167-1, number, are estimated to have left SCP-6167 sometime in the early 1800s. SCP-6167-1 number instances refer to each other as the Furies, and are marked by their aversion to sulfur their inability to die in a permanent fashion, their banishment from SCP-2746-1 by the loyalists, unclassified, and heavy attraction to a particular art form. SCP-6167-1 number are effectively immortal, achieved through multiple means, typically through reappearing after their bodies have died, and rapid regeneration. SCP-6167-1 number's physical forms are mutable and often take the form of one genus or family of the animal kingdom, occasionally choosing to also appear as human, or as a humanoid version of that animal. Prior to their banishment, 
SCP-6167-1 number instances fought against the Loyalists in a civil war, known to the Foundation as Event Nahash, C. SCP-2746. The civil war began when an entity called the Serpent attempted to sabotage humanity as a whole. This attempt failed and instigated a punishment from a being known as the Maker. This punishment, while not removing their immortality, rendered them vulnerable to hunger, disease, and pain. The Loyalists, who banished SCP-6167-1 number instances to SCP-6167, are mostly data employed by the SCP Foundation and other allied GOIs expunged today and are largely not a threat to the Foundation's goals. The location and status of the Maker after Event Nahash is unknown at this time, and investigation is ongoing. It's believed SCP-6167's appearance at Site-45 was meant to establish contact with the Foundation, with Dr. Crow to act as a representative. Forward 6167 the following documents are descriptions of SCP-6167's floors, an interview log, a letter delivered by Dr. Crote. This file of documents is restricted to Level 5 personnel. Level 4 personnel and below have been given a separate file with alternative details. Research into SCP-6167 is unnecessary, as O5-8 is intimately familiar with its contents. Documents not found here can found in document 6167-2 and may be accessed by personnel with level 4 6167 clearance or higher. Personnel file 6167-1 Forward, this file is an archived version of Dr. Harold Croat's personal file prior to his declared death by SCP-1913-1-D. Now SCP-6167-2. The photo and description do not fit his current appearance. It is also unknown if the Dr. Crote that emerged from SCP-6167 is the true Dr. Crote, or an elaborate duplicate. Name, Dr. Harold Crote. Security Clearance Level, 5. Job Position, Senior Site 45 Department Head, Research Division. Current Status. Deceased 1840-1991 History Dr. Harold Croat was born in America in the year 1840. His early life and education was spent living in New York, eventually attending the City College of New York, called Free Academy of the City of New York at the time of his graduation, to study psychology. He attracted the SCP Foundation's attention by graduating in the top percentile of his class. He was recruited and assisted in the founding of Site-45. Dr. Crote oversaw the mental conditions of all humanoid anomalous objects, as well as the well-being of staff. In 1871, Dr. Crote was deemed important enough to the Foundation goals to be granted Level 4 access. In 1991, Site-45, Las Vegas, Site-H, Orlando, and Site-H, New York experienced a containment breach involving all three SCP-1913-D instances. It's believed that SCP-1913-1-D materialized all instances to itself with the assistance of Data Dr. Crowd himself expunged, who allowed SCP-1913-3-D to utilize scp and break containment. SCP-1913-1-D had targeted several key members of Site-45 staff, before all SCP-1913-D instances disappeared, appearing to have been dissolved alongside staff. Dr. Crote and other staff are believed to be dead. Dr. Harold Crote's successor is Dr. Stuart Hayward. Break slash break. Interview 6167-2. Interviewed, Dr. Harold Crote, referred to as Harriet Crote. Interviewer, Dr. Dennis Toki. Forward, the following takes place an hour after Dr. Crote was apprehended at the entrance of SCP-6167. Dr. Crote was cooperative with Foundation personnel, albeit a member of the opposite sex since his death in 1991. Vegan Log, October 24, 1998. 
Good morning. You doing okay? Need any water? I'm Dr. Toki, we had a few questions for you. Ha, huh, I can imagine. I opened the gate of literal hell right underneath you, there. Don't worry though, I'm here to answer questions. Good, good. Honestly, you had us worried back there. So, uh, first, what's your name? Dr. Harriet Crote. Y'all have me as Harold Crote, though. Alright. Pause C, that's what's confusing us. Dr. Crote was a man. Also, dead. And by all indications, you're neither. Well, I can explain that. I never died. I just got headhunted, and the Furies offered me a better job. And the employment benefits they offered included things worth a lot more than money. Job satisfaction, mostly. But also the feeling of just pause being happy in my body, you know? I never regretted a single day in all my eight plus years of working for them. Pause so. Okay. Why are you here then? I was asked to. I honestly don't know why Clovis sent me here instead of a few others, but hey. None of the Furies led me wrong before. The Furies? That's what they call themselves. Dr. Crote shrugs angels sent to hell, motivated by vengeance. Which isn't entirely inaccurate. I suppose. So this Clovis is one of them. Their leader? Yes and no. Clovis isn't one of them since she was never sent to hell proper, but she does work for them and is a leader. I see. And these Furies. They did this to you. They did it for me. I kind of knew what I was for a while, but I don't know. The only people who understood were Stuart and Sarah. The rest of the keepers were kind of dicks about it. Ever since Sarah died in duty. I didn't want to bother Stuart with my problems, you know? Wait, did you say the keepers? The ones with that 1903 info hazard? I did. Why? Oh, no reason. Pause as well, they were. They thought it meant I was a drag queen or something. So, what? You wanted to be a girl. How's that different from everyone else? Pardon? I'm trying to understand how they incentivized you. That just seems like a weird thing to offer. Pauses, then chuckles oh. That's why Clovis sent me. What do you mean? Nothing, nothing. Anyway, they didn't offer me that initially. They won me over by just talking, you know, about what they want, what they were trying to do. They all kind of grow on you after a while. Grow on you? The things that killed everyone who stood in their way. Doctor, the Furies can't kill anyone. We killed our men. I was in the room when they decided who died and who was given advanced treatment. You've probably seen something like that during your career here, haven't you? That doesn't change the fact that that dog set everyone in the way on fire. Or that that skeleton maimed everything the dog told it to. Or how that ink from the cat erased everyone involved without a trace. Pauses hey, doctor. Have you ever been in love? Pauses what? What does that have to with anything? No, no. This is relevant. I, haven't, no. Living at Site 45 doesn't leave me with much free time. Well, you love your dad, right? Or mom? I do. Alright. Assume for the sake of argument that your mom and dad were taken. Not just by anyone, but by a large company with the resources to raise the dead if they wanted. Now imagine you could do something about it. You're immortal. You're powerful. You literally can't die. And you have a good chance of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with them one-on-one. -on -one. What do you do? Do you think you just sit by and do nothing? Pause so you feel that they were justified? Huh. You know what the first thing Freddy did when he found out we didn't care for our men's fatal injuries? He was angry. And I know he cried about it later. It was like he just realized that someone else's decisions made him a murderer. He wanted me to tell you he's not making the same mistake twice. End log. Closing statement, log was trimmed for brevity. For the full log, see SCP-6167 Documents 2. Interview 6167-3 Interviewed, 
Dr. Harold Crote, referred to as Harry Crote. Interviewer, Dr. Dennis Toki. Forward, the following takes place 24 hours after Dr. Crote was apprehended at the entrance of SCP-6167. Dr. Crote has continued to be cooperative with Foundation personnel, however, he has refused to eat provided meals. Begin log, October 25, 1998. Morning, Doctor. Morning, Doctor. They tell me you haven't been eating. Any particular reason? No, just not hungry. Don't mean to be rude or anything, I hate to see food go to waste. I'll tell you if anything changes. Very well. So, we had a few questions about SCP-6167. Hell already has a number, eh? Guess that makes me SCP-6167-1? Most likely. We haven't reached that stage yet. Regardless, we wanted to know. Why isn't anyone else there? Guess you expected it to be up to your tits with red skin demons, pitchforks, licks of fire, tortured souls, etc.? Well, that is what the classical hell is. Shouldn't there be people in it? Hell was never made for us. Just them. The Furies? Yep. So, hell is real. We found records of souls in there. That'd mean there's an afterlife, right? This is a discussion that will definitely lead to this interview getting expunged. Expunged, not redacted. Sure you want me to say? Go ahead. Well then. That is suppose I should talk about what a soul actually is. It's not. You. It's not your personality, or brain, or whatever. It's more like a natural vehicle for immortality. Like a. Ethereal escape pod. Or a tank that refuses to let you die. Or both. Usually, when someone with a soul dies, they just kinda reincarnate someplace else. That said, humans like us don't have souls. And there's no afterlife expunged, sorry if that's a buzzkill. Actually, I have to admit, that's kind of a relief. People have a load of different reactions to that. You handled it better than I did. But uh, yeah, barring the whole martyr thing, they kinda took the shit hand they've been dealt and made something with it. Yes. Oh. Right. We wanted to ask about that. The martyr. Ah. Well, it's more. A role? Every one of the Furies had their turn at becoming the martyr, till they were able to figure out a better food situation. Hell was designed to divide them. A place to kind of just send a bunch of immortals to starve. There's no special tricks to it. The rings aren't based on sins or anything. Just different kinds of environments to facilitate gang wars. Polar bears in the Arctic, monkeys in the jungle, that kind of thing. The martyr was Agatha's idea. Frey was the one to dive into it head first. So, what's the process of becoming a martyr? Do you mean the process, or how they're appointed? For the former, I dunno. It was deliberately erased from the record. Honestly, the Foundation could probably recreate it if they wanted to. But if you mean how they were appointed, then... Well, it started with Freddy, and worked its way from Agatha, down to the bottom, and then cycled back to Freddy. Freddy and Agatha probably had it the worst. How so? Well, all of their time not governing was spent trying to make that whole thing as painless as possible. Which was pretty hard, all things considered. They decided to just put them in the coldest ring. Getting frostbite for a year was a better alternative than being butchered alive. Being the first people to do it. I see. Tell me about them. What do they want? The Furies? Well, it's something of a toss-up between revenge towards the guys who put them there to begin with, and just wanting to fix things. They aren't bad people, you know. And who put them there? Well, for one. Datto 5-13. Hear that, Hugh? You fucking asshole? Expunged, but then there's Stuart and Sarah. They're one of the guys who did this, if it wasn't obvious. They were probably headhunted by the Foundation because of who they are. Wait. They did this? I'm sure they regret it. And I'm sure they've done their share of suffering. Especially since they don't remember doing it. Freddy and Aggie are laying off those two. But not, Datto 5-13? Expunged. Especially not them. 
Well then, that elevates things. Yep, it does. Do you want that? Well, it's not as if they can die, right? End log. Document 6167-4 Forward. The following contains descriptions of each floor in SCP-6167, its contents, and a description of its use by SCP-6167's inhabitants. Dr. Crow's testimony does appear to align with O5-S recollections, and is considered most likely true. The level 4 and below versions of SCP-6167 are devoid of Dr. Croat's reporting. Each entry is preceded with a relevant excerpt from an interview from Dr. Croat, selected from the 1026-3098. Floor 1 The Gathering Biome Type No Cavern General History The first floor is a large atrium where the inhabitants were deposited shortly after crucifixion and exile from SCP-2746-1. It's estimated that the inhabitants were left there for months until the entities Frederick, SCP-6167-1, and Agathos, SCP-6167-2, broke free. 5 8 reported that this floor was designed to hold all instances of SCP-6167's inhabitants until they eventually broke free and devoured each other. However, Dr. Crote reported that such an event never occurred, due to SCP-6167-1 and SCP-6167-2 breaking free first to prevent such. Later, SCP-6167 inhabitants allegedly used the area for announcements and meetings akin to a town hall. When we first got inked, we ended up in the top floor. Hell's entrance used to lead to Prometheus Labs HQ. Some of us thought we were dead at first, but we were greeted by a few dozen of them. Most looked like were things, but others looked like plain old animals. Not gonna lie, hell kind of felt like what I thought heaven be like. We were treated like heroes, believe it or not. It was surprisingly welcoming. Honestly, I wanted to pet them, but I felt that it'd be kind of patronizing. Freddy and Aggie made announcements from here. Once things got settled, he made it a point to bring snacks for everyone. Apparently, he used to be into blacksmithing, but cooking seemed to be his actual passion. Aggie was known for being a sculptor, but she's more of a writer. Actually, I think she helped write most of Freddy's memos. Floor 2 The Carved Canyon Biome Type Canyon General History According to 5 8 SCP-6167's floors did not possess different forms of torment, as led to believe, but had no other purpose in its construction other than to give SCP-6167's flying inhabitants a home advantage. It was expected that each floor would be host to multiple gangs, and many floors were meant to give certain species a home advantage, this one in particular sporting sheer cliffs, harsh winds, and bramble along the floors. However, Dr. Crote reports that the second floor was made more accessible and used as a place for showcasing art, such as stone statues, painted and carved out cliffs, and other projects. We left the caves and saw the canyons shortly after. We thought we were actually outside from the looks of it, but apparently it only looks that way from the ground. This was where we realized that they were just people. It was basically like a giant art gallery. They had ambitions, culture, Relationships. A lot of the furies seem to be in a polycule, I think is the word. I don't know. But seeing a bear, a stoat, and a bunny in the same place, getting along? The cutest damn thing I've seen in a while. Or 3. Forest of Feasts. Biome Type. Temperate Forest. General History. 5 8 reports that the intended use for this floor was to contain a specific denizen, SCP-6167-88, a.k.a. Isaac. This floor contained a modified instance of SCP-2988 which was designed to torment SCP-6167-88, and not bear any fruit. These instances no longer exist, having been harvested for lumber. Dr. Crote reports that the inhabitants banded together to save SCP-6167-88, who returned to its former duties shortly after. Floor 3 served as a dining hall and festive area. Most meals consisted of fruits, vegetables, 
and meat in the form of the flesh of the martyr, see floor 9. The burial mound of the final martyr pictured is located here. Evidence implies this being had a diameter of 13 meters, 43 feet. Apparently, a hyena guy named Isaac ran that floor. He lost his arms before getting sent here. Has some. Admittedly pretty cool prosthetics. He and Freddy ended up being cooking buddies after Freddy's time as the martyr. Back then, it was kind of like a open mess hall. Oh, and it has something of a memorial. The last martyr's old body was buried here, in the mound. Eventually, after countless cycles, the martyr system became redundant since they could just leave hell and get food. So instead of keeping up with it, they just ended it right then and there. Probably the right call. 4 4 The Gulches Biome type, hot desert. General history, sand dunes cover the entirety of this floor, with very little vegetation. SCP-6167 residents used this area as the marketplaces where goods and services were to be exchanged. They never developed a proper form of currency, and continued to rely on a barter system, occasionally trading legal favors, which were ranked by minor, moderate, and great. Allegedly, the martyr system allowed residents to return to the same standards of living prior to event Nahash. They never really liked the idea of money. They understand it, obviously, but they just didn't take to it. Apparently, they tried making some kind of currency at one point, but stopped after they realized some of them were being left behind. It all became a race for this one otherwise useless, limited resource. It ended when someone just bought all of the money and destroyed it. 4 5 the sticks. Biome type, tropical upwelling. General history, this floor consists of a beach alongside its perimeter. Instead of housing aquatic gangs, as intended, it was said that many came to the beaches for recreational activities. Dr. Crote stated that this floor served an identical purpose to a public beach. Seeing the sticks was kind of refreshing to see. A lot of us hadn't left Site 45 in forever, so just the beach was nice to see. Imagine like several kinds of animals in one place eating ice cream and playing ball. Apparently, it used to just be named the beach, but by the time we arrived, they've been exposed to our culture and ideas on hell, and were overall a lot more familiar with us than we were of them. Biome type, saltwater swamp. General history, this floor was originally intended to house an entity known as the serpent but such an entity was never banished to SCP-6167. Furthermore, by never being properly exiled to SCP-6167, this entity is capable of killing humans. O5- is under superior oath to not reveal who this entity is, but assures that it has been under foundation control. This location was renovated into a college district. Many of the buildings are classrooms, workshops, and libraries containing resident written literature and educational material. Most buildings were constructed on top of trees and are connected via bridges, ramps, and ladders. I spent most of my time here, not gonna lie. I actually taught a few classes there. Human psychology, how we work, literature, music, how the foundation works internally and externally. Sue me. But honestly, they taught me a few things too. And those things helped me with myself, my body, my work. For once in my life, I felt. Well, it's going to sound sappy, but it felt real. I was unhappy. And I have them to thank for that. Floor 7, Fitting Grounds. Biome type, Tropical Savanna. General history, this floor was dedicated to performance art, such as dance, gymnastics, and martial arts. It's reported that this floor also housed a form of militia, led by SCP-6167-1. This militia was mostly used to settle minor disagreements and end violence as soon as possible. SCP-6167-1 founded this militia with the initial intention of overtaking human civilization by force. This militia was trained to take advantage of the fact that they are incapable of killing humans and instead disable them through dismemberment and utilization of their individual anomalous properties with the intent of being able to fully treat their injuries after conflicts. According to Dr. Crote, since being released from SCP-6167, 
SCP-6167-1 and SCP-6167-2 no longer plan on instigating a hot war on humanity, but are instead focusing on the Foundation, Global Occult Coalition, and other major organizations with the intention of maintaining normalcy. They were going to wage war on us, you know. For a long time, they had a bit of a grudge against humanity, since, you know, the Garden of Eden thing. They didn't blame us as much as they did the serpent, at least. They kinda saw us as more of an obstacle to getting to the loyalists. I've seen what they can do to people. Even if they can't literally kill anyone, I'm pretty sure the shit they could do'd be considered a war crime. But they didn't expect the kinds of problems we've had throughout history. They didn't expect to actually root for us. Floor 8 The Farmland Biome Type Alpine Grasslands General History this area, due to the relative closeness to the ninth floor, was where the majority of crops were grown. After many years of artificial selection, crops that bore fruit and edible vegetation became possible. Leftover biomass and waste from the martyr was used as fertilizer. Funny thing, it was actually easier for them to grow hallucinogens for a while. Marijuana and mushrooms, mostly. There was a possum who made that stuff his life's work, and since Fred and Aggie's place was so close to here, they hung out with him a lot. Think he was there to develop a kind of painkiller for them too. I think it took a few thousand years before they were able to get plants that bore anything edible. And that was with a concentrated effort. The loyalists put a lot of effort into making sure getting food here was nigh impossible. Yet, despite everything, here they are. Floor 9 Residents of the Martyr Biome Type Tundra General History this area was intended to be a place where, in the event any form of hierarchy would form, the residents could exile especially heinous residents. This floor was installed with the intent to demonstrate the hypocrisy of protests in SCP-2746-1. Instead, and this is where residents house the year's martyr. The martyr was a term given to a resident who gave up their body for the rest of SCP-6167's residents. Before the other residents could escape from their crucifixions, SCP-6167-1 and SCP-6167-2 escaped first, and developed a process that caused rapid, tumorous growth and regeneration in SCP-6167-1 number instances. This process involved the development of additional limbs and organs, and the elongation of limbs. SCP-6167-1 and SCP-6167-2 developed a system where each resident of SCP-6167 would take turns becoming the martyr for a period of one year, starting with the oldest, and ending with the youngest. This provided the residents of SCP-6167 with an endless source of meat, fertilizer, leather, and other by-products. They lived here, you know. Freddie and Agatha. Becoming the martyr is the most painful thing they could experience. Especially for a whole year. Freddy and Aggie did everything they could to make it. Less so. That's actually why they chose the frozen layer. They hoped that the cold would numb the feeling of skin getting butchered. How couldn't they? They've been there themselves. Everyone has. Interview 6167-5 Interviewed, Dr. Harold Crote, referred to as Harriet Crote. Interviewer, Dr. Dennis Toki. Forward, the following takes place 168 hours after Dr. Crote was apprehended at the entrance of SCP-6167. Dr. Crote has continued to refuse meals. Dr. Toki was under orders to force him to eat prior to this interview. Begin log, October 31, 1998. Hey, Harriet. Oh, Dan. H, how's it going? Listen, I really need to get you to eat something. Anything. I drank. I mean food. Come on, you guys fought a war over hunger, you're not planning a hunger strike or something, are you? No. Pauses listen. If I don't get you to eat, then they're going to force you to. I know you don't want that. Hey, you like Stuart, yeah. I do too. Harriet? He was. Really understanding. Kind. Sarah too. Though, I don't think you met her. 
You know why the other keepers looked at me funny? It's cause whenever they have their thing. I wasn't wearing a tux. I was wearing a dress. Where is this going? What do the keepers see when they look at you? Silence. I hope I'm not presuming too much. But, I have a sixth sense about this sort of thing. You don't have to answer. But I'm guessing you're the reason I'm here. Asshole, you're doing this now. You're starving yourself, and now's the time to ask about this. Sorry, sorry. But, it's true, in it? It's been a hell of a week. Talked about a load of stuff. They're going to be transferring you over to Hayward, now. He's coming back from his vacation. Yeah. I expect he is. Everything was planned by someone, you know? You don't want that though. I, I don't. No. Hey. How'd you like to meet your old man? Pause pardon? Your dad. We could catch up, grab some dinner. It'd be my treat. You want me to eat, right? And, how would that happen? I'd rather show you than tell you. But you have to answer quick. Do you want to leave this place? Do what I did and get what I got? I, yes. I do. Then trust me on this. Barricade the door. Oh, okay. Dr. Toki picks up his chair and wedges it underneath the door handle. Shortly after doing so, pounding can be heard from the opposite side. Good. Now. Sorry about this, it's gross, I promise we'll be fine. You like spy movies? Dr. Crow chews hard and then spits at Dr. Toki. The resulting spit is black and begins to spread across their entire body before causing them to gradually disappear. End log. Closing statement. It's expected that Dr. Crowd has broken containment using a false tooth containing the ink from SCP-6167-2, SCP-1913-1, SCP-6167 number have proven themselves a greater threat, both through impressing Foundation staff, and also being acutely aware of sensitive Foundation information. All instances of SCP-6167- number and former Foundation staff who associate with them, are to be recognized as high priority and immediately hostile. Such staff should be subject to immediate apprehension, monitored interrogation, and then termination, as deemed appropriate. Thank you for tuning in, we hope that you enjoyed this broadcast. If you did please subscribe, like and share it around. If you have any particular case files you'd like us to cover in future broadcasts leave a comment below and we'll get around to it shortly. Tune in again tomorrow for more revelations.